Section 9.3, test, testing the population mean mu. Um, so it's going to be very similar to proportions. We just have two changes. So just like for confidence intervals, we used a t-score. So we have, instead of a z-score, we'll use t. It'll be x bar minus mu zero over s over root n. Um, in, parent in the calculator, you want to make sure you put parentheses on both the numerator and the denominator. So I'll show you when we get to examples. And then instead of using normal CDF, um, since we have a t-score, there's this new function called tcdf, which we'll see shortly. And then the only thing different is you'll still do lower and upper, but you also have to tell tcdf the degrees of freedom. So let's practice the formulas. So we have mu is equal to 5.2 versus mu is not equal to 5.2 for our hypothesis. And then our alpha is 05, and then our sample gave us x bar is 5.113, um, a standard deviation of 8.991, and n is 123. So we're just trying to, we have some data, we're trying to prove that the mean is not 5.2. Just going to practice the formulas, and then we'll do a full hypothesis test. So rather than finding a z-score for step two, 3, we're going to find a t-score. So it'll be x bar minus mu all over s over root n. So x bar is my sample, 5.113 minus 5.2, the hypothesis value. So they're a little bit different, but probably not a lot. All over 0 0.8991 all over square root 123. And again, you absolutely need parentheses on both the top and the bottom here, or you will make an error. So 5.113 minus 5.2, parentheses, divided by parentheses, 0.8991, divided by square root 123, and the parentheses. And you should get negative 0.0173. That's called a t-score rather than a z-score. So probably not rejecting, um, again, because it's probably just random because it's within two. But let's check out the p-value. So step four, we're gonna draw the normal curve. Um, since we're doing not equal, it'll be two-tailed. So we have negative 1.073 will be the left side, which means the other tail will be positive 1.073. So when we find the p-value, we're gonna go ahead and double it for two-tailed. And then we have a t-score. So we just use this new thing called t-CDF. I'll help you find that. We'll do lower, which is negative infinity, upper, negative 1.073, and then how do we find degrees of freedom? So we might not remember, but degrees of freedom was n minus 1. So n is 123, so degrees of freedom will be 122. So comma 122. So you go to that distribution menu, and then normal CDF you'll see, and if you just go a little bit lower, you'll see TCDF. And so we'll do lower, upper. And then some of you have menus where it commands it. It should command degrees of freedom, 122. And we get 0.1427. And then we just need to go ahead and double it for two-tailed. So 0.2854. Uh, so too risky, right? If this mean is still equal to 5.2, there's still a 28% chance this would randomly happen. So too risky, it's more than our cutoff of 05. So we would not reject. Essentially the idea is, is our sample was only a little bit different. So it could just be random. And so that's the only thing that changes is the formula for the z-score. We use t-score and we use t-cdf. Otherwise, this should feel very, very, very similar to proportions. So let's look at the procedure. Um, so the procedure for finding a hypothesis for mu when sigma is unknown, meaning we don't know the population standard deviation, because why would we know that? 
Um, X bar must be normal. So the requirements are the same as we've been talking about. If our sample size is large enough, n is at least 30, right? We have different requirements for means than proportions. Um, so if our sample size is not 30, then we need the population to be normal, or we need at least 15 if the population is not severely skewed. And then the middle steps look the same. Step one and two are same thing we've been doing, hypothesis and alpha. Step three is just a t-score rather than a z-score. And we'll use t-cdf rather than z, normal. And then five and six are the same. So let's do example two. Um, it is widely believed that healthcare costs have been rising at an unacceptable rate. In 2005, the average cost of a healthcare plan, ooh, what does that mean, average? So we're in mean land, not proportion land. The average cost of a healthcare plan premium for an individual with job-based healthcare was 3991, 3991 per year. So that's a claim. So that'll be my hypothesis. That's not a sample. A news website wants to show that costs have increased dramatically since then. Um, they obtained a random sample of 60 individuals. So that now that's my sample, n equals 60. In the US who have a job-based healthcare plan and then the sample produced an average cost of 5,311, so that's X bar, and a sample standard deviation or S of 1195. So let's go ahead and perform a hypothesis test at 5% to show the true average cost has increased. So my H1 and H, HO and H1 should have mu because we're in mean land. So mu uh, has increased from the 3991. So mu greater than 3991 will be H1 and then HO will just be equal. Alpha is nice and fast. Alpha is just 0.05 for 5%. So let's go ahead and find the test statistic. So we get x bar minus mu over s over root n. We found all these values. So x bar is 5,311 minus the claim 3991 all over s 1195 over square root of 60. We'll add parentheses and use our calculator. So parentheses around the top, divide, parentheses around the bottom. And I get a t-score, because we're in mean land. I made a typo. I get a t-score, it was 3991, not 3911. I get a t-score of 8.556. So this is a very, very big, this is way beyond two standard deviations. So I'm probably rejecting because this is so far beyond two. Um, but let's go ahead and find the p-value to assess the risk. Step four. So since we're doing greater than, we're gonna shade to the right. We don't really know where 8.556 is because it's so far, but we'll just imagine it. Um, so we have the p-value is TCDF, lower is 8556, up to infinity or 10 to the 99, and we just need degrees of freedom. Again, degrees of freedom, I'm gonna add that here to the steps is N minus one. So in this case, my N was 60, so degrees of freedom is 59. All right, so we'll find TCDF again, same menu as normal. Lower to upper and degrees of freedom. And I'm expecting a small p-value because the area is very, very tiny. And we get three e to the negative 12, which really means 0 0.000000, that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then three takes the 12 spot, which is basically zero to four decimal places, which is very, very little risk, way less than 05. So we'll go ahead and reject. It's very unlikely that if healthcare 
hadn't changed, that we'd get a sample this high at 5,311. So we're going to go ahead and reject HO. We're rejecting that the mean is still 3,991, meaning H1 must be true instead. Right, we're rejecting that to prove H1 is true. So we have strong evidence, or if you're doing this on your own, I have. We have strong evidence, 5%, to show average healthcare costs have increased. And if you forget what you're proving, it's usually there. It's in the question. And that's a hypothesis test, so we'll keep practicing these. Um, they're confusing and tricky, but the pattern does get repetitive and you start to get more used to it. All right, let's continue example two. We'll comment on the requirements. So since my sample size was 60, which is way more than 30, requirements are met regardless of the population. So once we're over 30, we don't care about anything else. So let's go ahead and find a 90% confidence interval and we can kind of see how, again, we get the same results. So I'll remind you, our sample was N is 60, X bar was 5,311, and S is 1195. And then the formula for a confidence interval, you might have to go back to your chapter eight notes, was X bar plus or minus T times S over root N. So the only thing we're missing is that T score. And that came from drawing the normal curve. We'll put 90% in the middle, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Since we have a T-score, we go to the T.05 column. Degrees of freedom is 59 and minus 1. So we'll go to the table. We'll go to the 05 column, and then I don't see 59. I see 55 and 60. So remember, we can't go over, so we'll use 55. So we'll use 1.673. So T was 1.673. And then let's go ahead and plug in. So the average is 5.31 plus or minus 1.673 times 11.95 over square root of 60. So we'll go ahead and find the plus or minus piece, 1.673 times 11.95 over square root 60. So I'm adding and subtracting about 258 or 258.1. I usually make them match, so 258 is fine. And then we'll just add and subtract. So I'll subtract first and then I'll add. And so we're talking about means, so mu is in the interval, 5,053 up to 5,069. And then we'll compare this to the hypothesis test, and we'll be done with this example. So in the hypothesis test, we rejected. We rejected the fact that the mean is, was 3,991 to prove that it was actually greater than 3,991. And the reason it agrees is look at our confidence interval. We're in the 5,000s, 5,053 up to 5,569. These are all my reasonable guesses for the average. The entire interval is way, way bigger than 3,991. So we're pretty confident that H1 is true. So it agrees because my interval is greater than 3991. So it agrees with rejecting that it equals, right? It's not even possible to equal 3991 in this interval. So it agrees, they match. Versus, I think last time, last section, um, we got a value that was in the interval for not rejecting.